Welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning. We were just we were just thinking pondering, 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 pondering. 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 The lady, what was her name? The lady that was the, no, it was Folgers Coffee. Yes, and she had the accent, and she always would break into everybody's house and make them a fresh cup of coffee. What was her name? Mrs. That's Folger. current stuff. I don't remember that. Oh, I can't remember her name. <clears throat> I'll let her think about it before the show's over. Six forty-eight. Glad you have joined us on Tennessee Valley this morning. Joe and Kim Palo with you on this middle of the week Hump Day Wednesday. We are now joined by Ron Moore, our Bradley County resident historian, which is here to tell us about county fairs. And what show do I do? You do Old Town Cleveland. Oh my goodness, he got it right, <laughs> yes. And I said Old Town Cleveland. You know, any advertisement is good advertisement though, right? Yes. Right. Yes, so. And, and, and it, you know, like I don't know the name of the show, it's Old Town Cleveland. Yes. <laughs> uh, but last week I thought I said hometown and you said yes, and I was thinking then it's no. Old Town. I but wouldn't have said that. No. I, somebody said yes. It may have been coming from back there. <laughs> he just thinks we all say But yes, Old Town no, Cleveland is on yes. Wolf we just Radio. Amusing. Yes, we just, did. We just humored. 99.9 <laughs> every Saturday from 10 to 12. Now, that's right. That is correct. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and so, anyway, so county fairs today, the history of. The county fairs. And, well, and, you know, tomorrow starts out the uh, Foothills County Fair here in Bradley County. It runs from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I think it's five dollars a day to get in, or ten dollars if you want to buy a pass for all for all week there, and a lot of fun. Uh, but county fairs, this isn't a new thing. Now the Foothills County Fair uh, started in two thousand four. Right. Uh, we had gone many years uh, without having a fair in this area here. You know the uh, tri-state fair up in uh, Athens was a big fair that went on for years and years. Hamilton County, but Bradley County had slipped away. But so now. Thanks to people like Louis Alford and his wife, they've yes. uh, brought it back. But county fairs go back all the way to the history of the time. You know, I, I read an article yesterday in 1957, before the Civil War came here, they was having county fairs here. Now, the uh, county fairs back then weren't held down at the Exhibition Center. Oh, well. uh, if you know where Whirlpool is, the old Magic Chef Maytag, right. uh, there was county fairs held in that area. And then across the street over where the Hardwick Woolen Mills is now, there was county fairs mm -hmm. held in there. And the, one of the main reasons that you would see county fairs in, in that area was springs and fresh water. Now, could you imagine why you would need fresh water at a fair? To drink? Mm -hmm. Well, drink. And also, you have livestock shows. Ah, and, good, good, good. And people who didn't drive there, they rode their horse or their buggy there. So fresh water was very, very important. As a matter of fact, you built whole subdivisions and whole areas and whole cities around water. And, and thank goodness Bradley County has plenty of springs. Uh, right. you know, uh, some people say it has the most springs per area than anywhere in Southeast Tennessee. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of springs there. So uh, they did the, the common things that you always did in a county fair. They had the biggest pumpkin and you had the biggest uh, tomatoes. And then you also had canning. and and mm -hmm. foods and baking and things pies, of that nature, yeah, pies, yeah. you know. And a lot of time the, uh, and this was big entertainment because there wasn't any cable, there wasn't any Channel 5. Oh, well then. You oh, know, well, there, then was, you there know. was nothing to do really. So, so a county fair was really a big attraction for the people to come out to and they would come from long, long ways. And a lot of time the biggest pumpkin and all that was just bragging rights. But when it got to livestock, it was a lot more important having a prize horse or a prize oh, cow yeah, right. was worth more. And you would usually see there was some class warfare there too. You know, that usually the, the more wealthy and prominent families would have a lot more of the horses and livestock. And of course, the, uh, the poor basically had a cow to milk. So, you know, there was a difference in, in the, how that was there. And something else I thought was pretty interesting is that you have to remember in 1857 all the way up through, oh, into the 1960s, a lot of Bradley County in the South was segregated. Oh yeah, so, so I uh, remember. So that. the blacks was not would not be allowed to come to uh, the fairs, so they just went and had their own. Uh, and in 1917, in the Cleveland Herald, I read that uh, the the Bradley County Colored Farmer Fair was on September 27, 1917, up in Charleston, and it was a huge event. They had uh, Speakers from all over the country come in, and they had uh, uh, huge crowds there. The uh, it, it, it's at Charleston High School. And you have to remember, Charleston High School is not where 
it is today. Right. right. Charleston High School is actually across the street. Right. Matter of fact, if you know where North Lee Highway is, Charleston High School was out there. Right. And they built the highway and they put the school up on the hill there. So <laughs> they moved that over. So uh, now we've had a lot of school ground areas, uh, fairground areas here in Bradley County. And some people may remember, of course, the ones down at the, the Woolen Mills and down at the Whirlpool, probably a lot of us don't remember that one, so nobody can dispute that one. But as growing up here, out on 64 Highway, uh, if you know where, basically, where Ben Lewis auction is, right. and uh, there's a little area there on the left, there's a dentist out there. That mm. was the fairground for Bradley County okay. for several years. And then after that, if you go out Georgetown Road, on Highway 60, and as you pass where Paul Huff comes in and you go across the bridge on the left, all that property's for sale now. Uh, all that was a fairground for Bradley okay. County for many years too. So uh, basically, uh, fairs are still today what they were then. You know, if you go to the one here, you're gonna see, uh, I don't think they do livestock at this particular one. No, but they do have a lot of they competitions. Have, they have and competitions and pageants, and, pageants and, and things. Mm -hmm. Always to the fair. Oh, they always have a pageant <laughs> and always, that's a, a big thing and then, uh, so Joe's just, he just knows he has that. He's just the fairest of the fair, the most interesting. There you go. Now, uh, <laughs> if, if you go to uh, the, uh, the county fair in Athens, uh, the Tri-State Fair, they still have livestock judging there. Okay. And a little bit more uh, a farming community than Bradley County is. But uh, they still have a lot of things down here, good entertainment, uh, you know. A lot of food. Right. We and, love uh, the food. Food is th things that Joe and I, I can't eat now. I'm not putting salt on it. I'm not putting salt on it. I'm not either. But well, so as I, I said earlier, that maybe I should have left the cheesecake out of my house. <laughs> and kept the salt. And kept the, some of the salt. Maybe a little balance there would have been better. But uh, Well, there is. Well, I mean, but, you got to have one or the other, Ron. Right. Right. I mean, you got to have sugar or salt. I mean, you can't but have But, of course, at, at, the, have either. at the fair, at the at the Foothills uh, County Fair, there's there's just great entertainment, great fun, family fun. It's a yes. family event, a fair is. It's not just for, you know, kids or just adults. It's for everybody. In fact, did we not, when we talked about Lake Winnebasoka, did that kind of start off like as a fair? The carnival rides came in? Well, sort of. It, it, was, it was more of a, uh, you know, just a party, good feeling type of place. They had a swimming pool. They had fishing and everything like that. And sort of just a social but it's gathering. always always around water. Oh well, yes, well, had to you, be. Well, you had to because of, like you said, your right. livestock. I mean, your ride had to have yeah. water. I mean, it wasn't right. like. Well, oh, you I have mean, to remember, you know, also public water wasn't as big back then. Right. So, uh, but in the eighteen fifties, uh, no, no bottled water. No, uh, <laughs> a lot of that. You know, I wish I'd thought of that. You know, I know. Is that amazing? You know, that we're paying a dollar. My that wife is. talks about when her dad, uh, when she was younger, riding around with her dad, he'd stop at these springs and. He had a mason jar and he'd fill it full of water. Right. And she'd just be embarrassed to death that he'd drink, take that water around, carry it with him all day and drink out of it. And he had invented bottled water, right. just didn't know it. See, I know, and you he know. didn't make the money from it. Now we're all paying you know, at least a buck. Of course, you know, most bottled water is some fat guy sitting in a tub, <laughs> sitting there filling it, <laughs> filling it, it up. up. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. Yeah. There, and so. it just goes like that. But, uh, well, you know, it's, it's interesting because I know I, I was brought up in, in Florida and we had the, uh, the, the fair that came to town every, every year. And I used to love when, that, when they came. I mean, everybody did, all kids do, I guess. But, you know, the rides and then this, the cotton candy and, you know, every game was a quarter. Hmm. I didn't do much of the rides. I wasn't big on He's, the Ferris no, wheels and all that. I used to like to like squeeze the the water gun in the clown's <laughs> mouth and make the ball pop out of the Those top of the Those are more head. carnivals, but the fairs were more competitions. Well, I mean, there was a lot of, but like it also pies. had it also had those yeah, games and it had rides. It was like, the, yeah, it had every. Well, yeah, those we had the. Uh, we had the fair, the Central Florida Fair, and it had livestock right. competition. And right, and a lot of that, I mean, because I remember when that was the big deal to have won the blue ribbon for your blueberry pie or your apple oh, pie yeah. or your apple butter is you what I remember. You got to brag or brag for yes, an entire bragging, year. Yes, absolutely. Or if you grew the largest whatever, you know, if you had the, the best tomatoes, you know, or the biggest But see, those winners always before. come from Oak Ridge. And, and I always take my spiritual <laughs> teaching from Andy Griffith, if you'll remember the, the <laughs> county fair episode where Aunt B tried to make pickles. Yes. <laughs> and she didn't do very good and they took her pickles and put store-bought pickles in there, and she was about to win the county fair mm -hmm. off her store-bought pickles. So uh, 
and Miss Clara was, uh -huh. uh, that was her Clara life. Clara was just her, a thorn I mean, in Ampey's side. Wasn't she <laughs> to be her best friend? Mm -hmm. Just a thorn in her side. I know. Yes. I saw, I was watching the other day, and she was a better, she was a better actor, too, She in the, in the, in the play, in the town, in the play. She of course. She always yeah. thought, Clara always thought she was number one. But we all know it was Aunt B. <laughs> That's right. Um, but yeah, it, well, I guess what's interesting is that the fairs have uh, held through time. I mean, they're still the same today as they were back then, as you said, maybe some without as much livestock competition, but the idea is still the same, and it still works today, you know, in every community, it's not just ours. I'd say they become more of a carnival type uh, atmosphere, but still that county fair feeling, you know, and you get into the rural areas of, of Tennessee, you'll find out the fairs are still that agricultural thing and we still have a lot of agricultural here you know yeah. the rotary club do their uh, junior dairy mm -hmm. show which we just did about two weeks ago and there are about 200 calves come into that so it's uh so agriculture is very very important and of course growing up that was the main reason of the county fairs and probably the other reason is just all to get together to get together and that was from uh, you know the beginning of time i mean even with the tribes when they would mm -hmm. all come together and they would have their competitions that they would you know, actually compete against each other oh, yeah. in just, you know, racing and, and different things. And then it evolved. We got a little bit more, I guess, civilized and started doing, you know, our cows better than me, you know, hitting you over the head with this bat or well, this know, piece the, of wood. The Cherokee I mean, days. I like that, that part. Right. You know, we have Cherokee days here down at the uh, Red Clay State Park and a lot of the games that they would have played back then right. uh, with the Cherokees. So, you know, like I say, it's all just a social event. Uh, but you know, with little bragging rights on the biggest pumpkin, you know, or your the like you say apple butter and yep. You know, so. And it, and it's whatever it's whatever area you're from because I know like melons are the McMinn County thing. Yes. Right. So if you're gonna if you're gonna compete in a in a melon contest, <laughs> you're gonna want to get your melons from there, or you're gonna want to be from there because you you got the biggest the best melon. You yeah. know about and it. And tobacco's still big up in uh, McMinn County. Also, oh, they, is it, they is have it really? yes. I didn't realize. Now we don't have as many tobacco growers here. Uh, that we still have some, but McMinn County still has a large tobacco growing area. My dad and mom and dad were from North Carolina, and they were from tobacco. I've I've barned a bit of backer myself, all the old backer. That's now that now you can get sick backer. in a backer barn yeah. when you're when you're. See, I wouldn't know about that. Whew. Yeah. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. We didn't do we didn't do backer. <laughs> didn't do no either. backer, huh? In Brooklyn, New York. No, there was no backer there. Yeah. Um, we had bikers. <laughs> There's anything like it. We had a backer. I used to bikers. love to dig Very potatoes. Similar. That was my best. I mean, that was I never liked growing thing. potatoes. Oh, I mean, you didn't? I love to dig potatoes. I'd be my grandmother. She I would like, be like, Kim, I like the vegetables potatoes. that are up here close to my hands. I just reach out and pick them. Those, uh, see? That's, I like the ones you find when you walk through the grocery store <laughs> and you go, here. Hey, how was well, and who yeah. knew cucumbers were going to be prickly and hurt you and make you itch? They will. Okra yeah. and cucumbers will make you itch and they're, they're prickly. Sure will. And they're and, pickles. <laughs> you know, like cucumbers it. can become pickles. Right. Yeah, well, they, well, like they don't start out that way. <laughs> well, vice versa, though. I think a cucumber, when it's a small baby cucumber, then it's a pickle. Then it grows to be a cucumber because that'd be an awfully big pickle. You know, if you had to pickle a cucumber. You know what I'm saying? But you pickle a baby cucumber, which is a pickle. And then as it grows, it becomes a cucumber. And then if you pickle it, it's a pickled cucumber. Think about that. <laughs> Uh, we are thinking about it. We are thinking <laughs> seven, about really, Joe. That's a seven oh one. It's we early. Have to come back because I don't think Kathy's coming. Kathy, today. well, well, Kathy may have may we see again because of the phone situation. We may not. I know we, we left our phones at, at home. So Kathy may but be Kathy's running late. Kathy's husband has had open heart surgery. Yes, he has, and, she's and we, we do hope he's doing better. Issues, so you know there might be an issue there. So Ron, you can get to talk about something else. Well, we'll talk about what you're going to talk about <laughs> on. We don't talk about people. on Old Town Cleveland. <laughs> We have uh, a good lead-in for that. Too. Uh, so let's just go ahead. You want to take a break? And that's what I was getting ready to do before you interrupted. But that's quite all right. I didn't mean to be speaking while you were interrupted. I've interrupted for 31 years. Uh, what are you going to do? Right. 32. So now it's 702. <laughs> it's 59 degrees. We will be back with more of Tennessee Valley this morning. We do have our weather forecast we'll put up when we come back. We'll let you know what you can expect there. And more great guests on the way after this. Stay right where you are.
Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. Hello, I'm Pastor Greg Casto with United Christian Church here in Cleveland, Tennessee. Do I have some exciting news for you. On September the 25th, right here in Cleveland, Tennessee, the mighty Kingsman Quartet from Asheville, North Carolina is going to be here in concert. That's on Sunday night at 6 o'clock, September the 25th, right here on at 2200 Peerless Road here in Cleveland, Tennessee. I want you to be here and be a part of this great concert. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Do you want to own your own business? Have you dreamed of being your own boss? If so, you do not want to miss the Be Your Own Boss Expo coming to Bradley Square Mall in Cleveland, Tennessee on Saturday, September 17th. If you're interested in owning your own business or working from home, be sure you come out to this free Be Your Own Boss Expo. If you currently own a small business and want networking opportunities and want to display your products or services, there are still tables available. For more information or to reserve your table, visit byobexpo.net or call 865-368-1095. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program, Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m., or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Welcome back to Tennessee Valley This Morning. Joe and Kim Palo with you on this Wednesday. We sure hope you're having yourself a good day. It's 706, 59 degrees. We are sitting here with Ron Moore, our Bradley County resident historian. And uh, Ron's been talking about county fairs that uh, come to uh, each and every community. And of course, the ones here at our community. And uh, just a little bit more. Let's talk about, we got the Foothills County Fair. Well, we're, we're talking, talking about, about pickles, though. So that was see. another issue. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll get into that later. we over salt curing, over sugar curing. Right. And like, you know, Ron's a big sugar cure. And I yeah. do, too. I like the sugar cure. Yeah, ham. that, that. I like salt. I mean, I like country ham and salt, but I do like sugar. That's cure called country better. country ham and city ham, isn't it? That's right. That's yeah. right. And so and I. And red eye gravy. Red eye gravy, yes. Red eye gravy. See, I know about some of these yeah. southern things. I, I'm hey. How long, did okay, it, now, how long did it take you to eat just good old milk gravy, sawmill gravy? Oh, oh when, I, when I met Kim and I started dating Kim, her mother made sausage gravy, which I like better than milk gravy because mm -hmm. it's got a piece of sausage and flavoring. It, I, it, I went berserk because I've never had that before. So needless to say, it filtered down. I had my brother have some, which then he became a huge fan. So it was like after I have kind of met the North Carolina side or the, the you know. Right, did, did you get into grits? No, no I don't. I still grits. don't do it. Now, like we, we eat per, uh, Purina and. Uh, with, That's dog know, food, isn't it? No, no. It's, <laughs> a, it's, uh, 
It's a Farina. Farina. Let's say Farina. Farina. You know, he, Farina. He likes, <laughs> Farina. Farina. <laughs> Farina dog food. That's what we <laughs> ate. It was always, it was tasty. A little salt and sugar it makes it good. But no, Farina. And Let then there was little. Polenta is you put the that, Italian. Uh, you, you put know, salt and gravy on that no, Farina. No, no, no. And it worked Farina. great. Oh, yeah. Okay. But, but the grits thing, the grits thing, it. I never could get into. I just, it didn't have a taste for me. Even with butter or people put sugar on it. No, I just. I don't. I can't do grits. I like grits. I love grits. Well, you know, uh, talking about county fairs, thing, our show on Old Town Cleveland this week is sort of in that relation. There, we're going to be having Mrs. P. Dab Matthews. Oh. Okay. And if you, anybody knows P. Dab, it's Mrs. P. Dab. This is the, the better part of that P. Dab <laughs> uh, group there. Uh, but she's going to come in. We're going to talk about quilting and canning and things of that nature uh, and cooking. Uh, so. You know, remember quilting, if you were growing up, probably you grew up in the South, there was probably a quilt that your grandmother made yes. for your aunt and thing. And quilting was a big thing in the different squares. No one does that type of art no. now. You go to Walmart. Right. So, But there's some people, but they're quilting. Uh, and then we're going to talk about canning, about different ways you can can and different things. And we'll talk about pickles, how you can how, pickles. How you pickles. So you need to listen in. Right. Well, jar them. See, I like the jarred you have ones. To jar, right. Well, it's the same thing. Canning well, why do you call it jarring. canning? It's jarring. It's, well, <laughs> it's just the way Food that it for is. Food for thought. So, I mean, seriously. Food for thought. But, but, you know, I've always thought, you know, you think, you know, I'd like to go back to that era and I'd like to put up my own stuff and can and, mm -hmm. and grow. And, and I'm like, no, I'd like to go to like a camp like or a, 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 you know, a retreat that I went for like two weeks and I would quilt and I would can for like two weeks and then I would come I back. I'd like to go to, to like a modern. country store and buy the homemade pickles. Right. <laughs> But, uh, you know, canning was important because uh, we didn't have refrigeration. Right. right. Uh, and so we had to preserve food. And uh, and if you didn't grow food, you didn't eat. You That's know. right. And you have to remember during the Depression era that farmers really didn't see the Depression as much as, as the city folks did. Because the farmers had food and they were already poor. Right. <laughs> the, you know, they didn't the have money. And so... Uh, but they would can things to eat all year round. I remember my uh, grandfather always had a huge garden, had a cellar where you'd put cellar, where you'd put the potatoes down in there. And I was amazed that the potatoes would last so long down right. there in that cool. cool. And but then there was always green beans, green beans, green beans, green beans, pickled beets, and and uh, uh, pickles. Right, pickles. And see, and, and all that and stuff. Tomatoes. That's that's tomatoes. She has tomatoes all the time. A lot that's of tomatoes. The right. Both of my grandparents, they both, um, my my on my dad's side, they were tenant farmers. Um, on that, and then my on my mom's side, he had a a, a great. I mean, he even had grapevines, and that was just hysterical because you really the birds knew as soon as those grapes would get ripe they were right on them and so talk about scarecrows and he would have all the aluminum you know foil pans out there and always but attending to that but he always tended the garden and when I went I learned a little bit of that and and uh, shelled a lot of peas and you don't do any days. of that now I, hmm. no, huh. Maybe. <laughs> I gotta tell it myself though about the quilting thing now you got to remember as I said I was born in Brooklyn New York we didn't do a lot of quilting there my grandmother <laughs> from Italy, didn't do much quilting. <laughs> but I know that in the South they did a lot of quilting and, and Kim's grandparents did a lot of quilting. Kim's grandmother made quilts, labors of love for people, beautiful. for fam beautiful quilts. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we, we inherit this quilt from her grandmother <laughs> that's a beautifully, now that I look back, beautifully done quilt. And uh, so, <laughs> We're at our house, and we had just gotten married or whatever, and again, I'm not much on into quilts. <laughs> and we buy, I buy a Sunbeam, and if those of you that, it, a Sunbeam little mini grill. It was about $15, okay? It was about this big. No, it was a gas grill. It was a gas case. grill. I mean, it, it was, was about $15. First, I mean, that was it was back in the it 70s, was a, it, was 70s one, it was a one, it was a one, it was a one thing. I mean, it was Burn. only about this, but it looked like a bread box. That's how big it was. <laughs> Had it outside on the deck, and I noticed one day, you know, it's getting rained on. Again, it was about $15. It's getting rained on. Don't have a cover, so I ran in the house and grabbed a quilt. <laughs> I covered it in one of these quilts. Now, it's a $15 grill, and I left the quilt on there. Now, the quilt stayed on there for a long time until it gradually rotted. <laughs> 
Okay, we used the grill, I put it back on, it rotted. When it rotted, of course, the grill was ready to be thrown away at that point anyway, because it was only $15. So here now the, thrills, uh, the grill's getting thrown away. The quilt is disintegrated. And I and felt bad. And my parents were very proud. Now, now. We got to go to break. We, we are going to go to break. Tracy now, here. my mother-in-law did see that. And I think to this day, she's still upset. Rightfully so. But it was. It was a lot of work. I think she was no, upset long before the quilt. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. You're right. It was just another, anything. I another would say nail Joe, in the coffin. I mean, that and he, it didn't matter. It right. was it, what he wanted to do. It's what I so wanted to do. All right. But we got to go, Joe. We got to go. Are, if you let me do it. We got, <laughs> we got Tracy Shellhouse, I believe. Is, is on the way from the Executive Director of New Hope Pregnancy Center. Ron Moore, thank you so thank much for being with us. I will see you Friday night on Football Friday where That's we'll right. have another topic. We'll talk football. <laughs> we're talking about pickles. We won't talk about pickles. We're quilts. Um, we're going to be back with more Tracy and New Hope Pregnancy Center and the Walk for Life. We're going to talk about that coming up after this. Stay right where you are. It's 714. <laughs> I'm Pastor Greg Casto with United Christian Church here in Cleveland, Tennessee. Do I have some exciting news for you? On September the 25th, right here in Cleveland, Tennessee, the mighty Kingsman Quartet from Asheville, North Carolina is going to be here in concert. That's on Sunday night at 6 o'clock, September the 25th, right here on at 2200 Peerless Road here in Cleveland, Tennessee. I want you to be here and be a part of this great concert. I'm Kathy Guy with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Call us today for all your personal insurance needs. With 28 years in the insurance business, I have the solutions and pricing you are looking for. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television, Thursday at 7 o'clock. Friday at 8 a.m. or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Do you want to own your own business? Have you dreamed of being your own boss? If so, you do not want to miss the Be Your Own Boss Expo coming to Bradley Square Mall in Cleveland, Tennessee on Saturday, September 17th. If you're interested in owning your own business or working from home, be sure you come out to this free Be Your Own Boss Expo. If you currently own a small business and want networking opportunities and want to display your products or services, there are still tables available. For more information or to reserve your table, visit byobexpo.net or call 865-368-1095. Welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning on WTMB. Joe and Kim Palo with you, and we are joined now by Tracy Shellhouse, who is the Executive Director of New Hope Pregnancies Care Center. And uh, we're going to talk to Tracy about the Walk for Life 
which uh, I'm just going to give you a little bit of info on here and then let Tracy talk about it a little bit. It's the 15th annual Walk for Life uh, walk, uh, Walkathon here in Cleveland. It's going to be Saturday the 24th. Begins at Cleveland High School. Registration begins at 8.30. Walk event begins at 9.30. This is all AM. Um, and, of course, they're taking donations. Uh, they'll be conducting pregnancy tests, 24-hour hotline, confidential and compassionate peer counseling, uh, learning opportunities. This is with Walk for Life uh, services. Learning opportunities to earn baby and maternity items, parenting classes, uh, absentee, uh, ab absences and sex and sexual abstinence. Jones. Abstinence. It's called not having sex. <laughs> Until you're married. I, I'm sorry. reading it as I go. I abstinence and sexual abstinence. purity. <laughs> Education in schools and churches, post-abortion recovery support. Contact and participation info is 479-5825. That's the phone number you're going to want to call or the website is New Hope uh, PCC, New Hope spelled out, PCC.org. And again, Tracy Shellhouse, Executive Director. Tracy, thank you for being with Absolutely. us Absolutely. And New Hope has been a part of Cleveland, and Cleveland Many has years. been a great support of mm -hmm. the Walk for Life. It is something that Cleveland has supported for a very long time. And we're just thrilled to have you, and welcome well, thank to you. Cleveland. You thank are you. new to the area. I heard that yes. you're from Alabama to mm -hmm. begin with, and we forgive, we forgive <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> Alabama, but you're from the South, and you were an Executive mm -hmm. uh, Director in Houston, but now you're yes. in Cleveland. Welcome to Cleveland. Well, Thank you. This is one of my favorite areas. I actually, uh, while I was in college, spent a lot of time up here um, on the rivers and in the woods. And go. so when a job opened up in Cleveland, I was like, Lord, I think that one's for me. That's right. <laughs> Lord, Lord, you don't need to tell me because I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> I want to go to Cleveland. Well, mm -hmm. th that's great. So now the walk we know is going to be Saturday the 24th and that raises money for it raises money services. to provide the services that were mentioned the pregnancy test the options counseling um, our earn while you learn program which is the material assistance program um, you know a lot of people that come through our door are uh, most are experiencing an unplanned pregnancy and it can be right. very scary and what we found over the years is a lot of times you just need someone to talk to that's going to love you not judge you right. right that's going to encourage you and you realize that you're not by yourself and the Earn While You Learn program is wonderful because they get uh, prenatal and parenting education, but then they earn mommy money. And then they're able to get car seats and diapers and clothes and oh, all of the good. things, the big financial uh, investment that it takes when you have a little one. Yeah, because that is. It, yes, it's a it is. Huge, it's a huge thing. And I, I noticed I was reading, I went to the website and I was reading a little bit about it, that that you have just now started to offer, or not just now, but mm -hmm. recently, is the post-abortion when somebody makes yes. a decision yes. and that sometimes that decision comes back to, mm -hmm. to bite you. I mean, we've all made bad decisions mm -hmm. in our life. I mean, I've made... Yeah. Not you, honey. <laughs> Not you, honey. You were the that was best, the best decision. You were right. the best decision I ever made. Continue. But, right, no, but you know, you make a, ba a, a, a bad decision in the counseling, but you have you have counselors mm -hmm. ava available to talk to those people yes. post-abortion. A lot of women experience what's called post-abortion stress syndrome. It's very much like it's like post-traumatic stress of those that are vets or someone that's experienced right. something very traumatic. And uh, there's a lot of emotional issues that go along with that, along with spiritual issues. And again, you know, we're not there to judge. We're there to help our community. We're there to love people. And, um, and honestly, there are a lot of women that allow a decision in their past to hold them back from living in the present today. And that is, uh, it's heartbreaking and it's a shame. And, um, and from a spiritual perspective, I think there are a lot of women out there that sort of feel like second class Christians and they feel like they have this horrible secret they can't share right. and that should not be the case. Right. And so we want everyone to know, I mean, the Lord loves you, we love you, there, there's no judgment there. And our volunteer base is made up with such an eclectic group of people. We have people who are post-abortive and now they're loving and ministering women, um, to women who are post-abortive. We have people that, you know, um, married and, and did everything is, is the way we look and a lot of people go the way it should happen, right. you know, and so, um, you know, we meet all kinds of needs. Well, excellent. So excellent. So now tell us about the walk. Okay. We know that's going to be not this Saturday, but right. et cetera, a week mm -hmm. from Saturday. Yes. And it's going to start at Cleveland High School. Yes. And how can you get involved and what do, what, what do the people need to do to, to be a part of this? Okay. Well, one thing they can, um, as, as you mentioned before, our office number is 479-5825. 
Live. We have a website and they can go to newhopepcc.org and on the website they can pre-register for the walk. If someone ne doesn't necessarily want to walk but they believe in our mission, they can go and make a donation for the walk, which would be wonderful. This, uh, we have two major fundraisers every year and our uh, banquet was scheduled for April 28th. Oh, and so we had to cancel right. it. Absolutely. Well, we didn't have to cancel right, it, but, but you know, we didn't feel that it was a time necessarily to celebrate right. our 25th year. It was time to invest and help our neighbors. Right. And so we rescheduled it and did it in June, but it definitely did affect our income. Sure. And um, we do not receive any government funding. We are completely and solely supported by uh, churches and individuals. Wow. And, um, and so that being said, those fundraising events are important. And so this will be our largest fundraiser of the year. And um, what people can do is what we ask is that they be a sponsored walker. It's also the largest pro-life event in the Akoi region. 1,100 oh. people walked last year. Wow. It's a pretty big event. It is. And uh, it's a wonderful event to be involved with. What's great is you can bring babies and strollers, you know, um, and so just most everyone can get involved. But um, as people uh, come through, what we ask is that they either uh, sponsor themselves mm -hmm. or maybe even ask others to sponsor them. Um, on average, out of, out of about 10 people that you ask to sponsor, um, you're usually going to raise between $150 and $200. Wow. And it makes a big, big difference. Let me ask you, Tracy, now, is it, is it just individuals or do, is there teams, is there groups? And, and then what's the cutoff date before they can get registered and be, to be a part of the walk? They can register that morning. Okay, so up until <laughs> yes. the that's right. okay. Absolutely. That's if that's if they want to walk and be there, we want them there. We have uh, pre-registration, but that morning we will have a registration table where they can go ahead and register. Uh, that will be from 8.30 until 9.30. We do have teams and individuals. We have a lot of individuals, but we have teams. Uh, a lot of those teams are church teams right. or maybe businesses right. where employees get together and say that they're going to work together as a team to support the ministry. Um, we have a lot of, uh, even within the churches sometimes, a maybe a Sunday school class or a Bible study. Okay. We'll get together and form a team and maybe even compete within uh, their own sure. congregation. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we have quite a few people that show up. We have people that have been doing this now for 15 years. Okay. Uh, and they're very, they love it. They look forward to it. They can't wait until it gets there. And we have a lot of people that are brand new and uh, a lot of new residents. This area is really growing and booming yeah, and a lot of people yeah, are moving yeah. in. And, uh, you know, that's part of, um, you know, my job is to let people know who we are and uh, not everybody is going to be for us. Uh, I think everybody really appreciates what we do, but it might not be their passion and that's okay. Right, right. And we all have to have different passions and, yes. and everything because that, that way. But now do, t you know, I'm aware and I'm sure a lot of people are aware of what New Hope Pregnancy mm -hmm. is. But but a lot of, of the viewers out there may not really know what your mission is, what your right. mission statement is, what your passion mm -hmm. is, and what your ministry is. So just take a, a minute or two to tell the folks out there what you guys are, what your soul is, what your passion, okay. and what your drive is. Well, we are a pregnancy help center, and uh, that really sort of sums it up. Uh, we have people that come through that are um, maybe married and expecting, but maybe it's their first child and they want education, so we provide that. A lot of our clients come through and um, maybe don't want to be pregnant mm -hmm. and they need some help and some direction, so we do that also. Everything we do is free. We do not charge for any of our services, and that's what is so important is uh, we are really there to help people. We're not there to make a profit, and um, a lot of people think we're there to push an agenda, but we're not. Mm -hmm. We're there to inform people, to educate them, and we do believe that if you're informed and educated, you're going to make a wise decision, right. or you have a much better chance of so making maybe. a wise decision. Right. <laughs> and um, and and so that being said, really our heart is, um, you know, to reach out with the love of Christ um, and to unconditionally and non-judgmentally love um, those that come through our doors. Mm. Um, my desire is that if someone leaves. And if they even choose to terminate a pregnancy, if they start dealing with emotional uh, issues later, that they know that we're going to love them, that they can come back. Right. And so it's important that we do a good job of loving them when they come through our doors the first time. Um, our heart, and I can tell you my heart, my heart is that um, women would never feel that they have to choose abortion. Right. That they know that there are options and that they have uh, choices. A lot of women who choose abortion, um, as I've counseled them later um, through post-abortion counseling, they tell me if I had known 
what I know now. If someone had told me, if someone had been there to love me, if someone had just encouraged me because no one in my home or my life was encouraging, but if I'd felt that somebody would have stood with me. And, uh, and we do things like helping them find maternity homes if they, if they need housing. We do all kinds of work. We have a limited scope of services, but um, we are able to work with other community organizations sure. to be able to get them maybe to the next step. You know, we don't have a food bank, but there are plenty of areas here that do. Right. Um, we provide some limited clothing, but there are other ministries that do a wonderful job of meeting needs that we simply can't. Right. So even if you don't actually have the physical, you know, absolute mm -hmm. uh, need to fill their need, you know where to get it. You yes. know where to send them. You know yes. what, what's out there and what's available. And Cleveland is a very, very giving yes, and it is. loving community. Yes, it is. And so welcome Thank to you. Cleveland. Yes, We're thank so you. glad thank to have you. you and you do a great job. And guys, you want to walk here. Well, well let, let's Saturday. tell you again. It's Saturday the 24th. It's the 15th annual Walk for Life Walkathon at Cleveland High School. It's where it begins. It begins at 9 o'clock registration, or 9.30, I should say. Registration begins at 8.30 if you aren't pre-registered. The phone number to get pre-registered or to find out more information, 479-5825, or log on to newhopepcc.org. You can find out information there and register there as well. Tracy, we want to thank you so much for being with us. And we want you guys to make we donations. Make These donations. Guys, yes. They need your money. <laughs> yes, they need they your do. help. And, and they need uh, your support. And it's a great, mm -hmm. great, great cause. So um, yeah. if you don't walk, write a check. There you go. <laughs> Again, Tracy, thank you for thank being you. with us. Tracy Shellhouse, Executive Director of New Hope's Pregnancy Care Center. And again, the walk is the 24th. It's 729. It's, we're about out of time. It's 59 degrees. You folks have yourself a good day today. It's, it's Wednesday. Hump it's hump day. There. That's right. We're almost to the weekend. <laughs> so have yourself a good day, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Remember tomorrow, Nancy Kaysen yep, in Tennessee Valley here. this morning. Have yourself a good morning and a good day.